Welcome to the OCP U.S. Summit. Please welcome the CEO of Open Compute Project, Corey Bell. Good morning. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone got a good night's rest and didn't drink too much last night. I, I think some of you did. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming in from all over the world. We are so grateful that all of you are here. Um, you know, our community is the fabric of the foundation that really builds the infrastructure that changes people's lives. That's why our, our theme for this year is open hardware, open software, open future. We believe that we have some great things that's going to happen, not only this year, but has gone on in the past. I'm in awe of what we've been able to accomplish over the last six years. This is our sixth U.S. summit, starting from a very nascent idea in 2011, birthed out of Facebook, to where we are today. So I'm very grateful for all of you for being here. So thank you for coming. I'm excited for the next speaker coming up for us. This is going to be our chairman of the board, Mr. Jason Taylor. Hi, everybody. So I'm Jason Taylor. I serve as the OCP, uh, I serve on the OCP board as chairman, and I want to welcome you to this year's event. Now, before I get started, I want to talk with you all about something that's a little uncomfortable. You guys are not the easiest crowd to talk to. It, it's, just a, it's just fact. We talked about it all last year, and I know we're all engineers, and I know we're all serious about hardware. And I also know that anything that we do as hardware people is going to take a couple of years to land. And worse than that, you don't even really know when you're done, right? Because you get it out into production, you find an error, you've got to go do a rev, you've got to go do a hotfix. There's all kinds of problems with deploying hardware. And what this means is that there's almost never a really good time to celebrate. And there's not a good time to celebrate progress. There's always gating in terms of, I got done with DVT, EVT, PVT, MP, we're all ready to go. Oh my God, there's still bugs. Like there's all kinds of problems with releasing hardware. But today is one of those days when we've chosen a time. It's not the perfect time, but it's a time that we're all here to celebrate progress in hardware and progress in the OCP community. So um, you know what, if you're feeling the material, just show it, give some applause, kind of help, help all of us out on stage because we're all engineers, we're all deep geeks, and uh, you know, we, could, we could use a little help. So kind of warm it up a little bit for us, and uh, thank you. Wow. That's great, thank you. Okay, so there's also a ton of work that goes into this show. Uh, I want to make sure to say thank you to everyone uh, who's involved in putting it on both uh, volunteers, people in the OCP Foundation, and of course, uh, everyone who's contributed material for today. So thank you. I also want to thank our sponsors. Uh, check out all these companies that are making it possible. We've actually got 88 members was where we were last year, at the summit last year. And as of today, we've doubled to 195 members. It is a huge number of companies that have chosen to work with OCP. This is our first page of, uh, of companies. There's our second page. It's an incredible list of companies, tons of great engineers who are all here to work in the open and really make OCP a fantastic organization. So thank you all. Now, our first highlight today is the OCP marketplace. This is something we've been talking about for a long time. And, and the question is, is where can you find all of the gear that is available to buy that is OCP today. And uh, the OCP Foundation team has done a lot of work to put this together. And for the last year, the OCP Incubation Committee, this is a group of volunteers from the community, have spent a ton of time figuring out how to implement OCP accepted versus OCP inspired categorizations in a way that works for the community. So OCP accepted is something where the full design specs are contributed, and OCP inspired is 
an acknowledgement that this server was implemented true to, the design, to an existing design spec. And so uh, I just want to thank the OCP Incubation Committee and Foundation for really doing a lot of work here. So today at launch, you'll see 70 products uh, ready to purchase on the site, along with which vendors you can go to to, to work with to buy them. So, so thank you all for working on that one. Now, one of the things I want to look back over the last couple of years, one of the things that you've really seen just over the last two or three years is unbundling of hardware and software. Now, the first few years of OCP 2011 to maybe 2013, 2014, a lot of it was really just about widening the number of SKUs that were available in OCP. You had compute servers, uh, storage servers, all of those sorts of things. We, but when we got into network servers, we started to see a gap where hardware wasn't sufficient alone because you needed the software stack on top of it. And uh, at least for today, I'm excited to note that uh, Microsoft's Sonic team has announced support for Wedge 100, which is one of the OCP uh, hardware SKUs for, for networking. And it's, it's been fantastic progress. But there's always been one thing that has been missing in OCP. And it's been missing since, um, God, since the early years. I remember talking about it uh, at an OCP event in December of 2011 when we were talking about the challenge with the community of how do you store data and how do you keep it for 100 years? And what does that look like? And all the discussions were not about hardware. The discussions were about software. And the discussions were about the software stack. How do you implement it? What are the best operational practices in order to keep data, which is keeping data for a really long time is a disastrously difficult problem. And what I'm really thrilled to announce today or at least to acknowledge these are announcements that came out of uh, two companies. Uh, one is NetApp has made their software unbundled and available for use on OCP gear. They've announced it today. You can read about, their, um, read about it in their press release. But this is one of the first times where you can really get enterprise storage software completely unbundled from hardware and it all supports uh, OCP gear. So I'm really excited about that one. And secondly, IBM has done a very similar thing with their spectrum scale. In addition to qualifying it on OpenVault and Leopard, they've also qualified it on BarrelEye, which is the, their power processor. And I, am, I just I can't believe how fantastic it is that we've really got multiple options for enterprise quality storage on OCP gear available today. So having some of the top storage companies in the world bet on OCP hardware is a tremendous validation of our hardware ecosystem and maturity. So I think that the other thing that I want to give you a quick update on is just this kind of housekeeping is last year uh, at this summit, we talked about the availability of 19-inch SKUs and about how OCP SKUs were coming in both 19 and 21 inch, and that was really just kind of focusing on the motherboard. Now, today I'm excited to share that you can buy that next generation OCP SKU from both WeWin and Quanta later this year in both 19 and 21 inch. It's the same motherboard, it's just in, in two different form factors. And so that's a, again, another way in which this community is maturing, a way that the ecosystem around us is maturing, and it's, uh, it really means that we've got a lot of, a lot of availability of gear. Now, the other thing that was coming up last year was we extended the reach of OCP into telcos with the Telco Project Working Group. Then we started with fewer than 20 participants, and now that list has going, grown to over 100. And they're doing cool stuff, and I can tell you that there was a lot of work just before the summit last year just to get that uh, OCP Telco project grouping uh, kicked off. And now, only a year later, we actually have Nokia announcing today that they're working with AT&T on telco quality gear using OCP hardware, and it's uh, being tested in one of AT&T's innovation centers. So again, this is telcos are betting on OCP, and again, it's a, it's a testament to the strength of the designs that all of you have contributed to and built over the, next, over the last several years. 
So all of this points to maturity that we built here. It's a fully developed ecosystem that you all have created. And I hit a, quite a few highlights today, but it doesn't begin to tell you everything that's going on over the next two days. Now, before we get into the rest of the day, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the future. And I want to talk about workloads, where they're going, and I want to observe one of the very successful things that's happened over the last several years within the OCP community and throughout other communities uh, like these. And that is the landing of Flash into the data center. It's been a hell of a four or five years here. It was really kicked off uh, quite strong in 2011. Um, there was a lot of maturity hitting quite well in 2013. But OCP and this forum has been one of the communities where we as as tech people and as all infrastructure people have figured out how to use Flash in the data center. We've iterated. You've, you're going to see a lot of nice announcements today. You're going to see a lot of nice hardware today. But I just want to acknowledge that the development of Flash in the data center, I want to acknowledge that OCP in this community has been a key part of really making that happen and landing it in, into, into data centers worldwide. So that's a great success. But I also want to note an engineering workshop that's happening tomorrow about the future of hard drives. And a couple of uh, several OCP community members have gotten together and have talked about where do they all see their workloads going, where do they see their challenges with hard drives over the next several years. And there's a, there's a uh, working session tomorrow talking about where do we all believe as a community hard drives need to go to in order to really land and be supportive of the workloads of the next three to five years. And that's all of us working in the open, trying to figure out just where do these workloads need to go. So predicting the future is, uh, of course, you know, more or less impossible. However, if we think about all of the different workloads that are going to happen, we're not going to know. Nobody in this room is going to be able to predict with any kind of real certainty where the next products are going to be, how the next products are going to be built, what they're going to need, how they're going to need to evolve. We won't know what the next three or four years of killer products are going to be. But as hardware people, as infrastructure people, all of this room together, we might not know exactly what's going to be built, but we do know how it's going to be built. It's going to be built with the same terabytes per IOPS constraints that we have today with a delta of however, wherever we can move it to. It's going to be built with the basics of Flash. It's going to be next-gen NVM. It's going to be the GPUs. But we're the community that can really start to understand not exactly what's going to be built, but I think that we can all come together and figure out how we're going to do it and how we're going to operate on those constraints and how we can change those over time. So I think that this is uh, something that the OCP community has been doing well, maybe not as formally. Tomorrow, I think, is one of our first attempts to formalize that a little bit better. But I do invite you all, as we think about where we're going to go with OCP, to think about the possibility of, of really leveraging this community to help to define the next generation of uh, workloads and, and the hardware that, needs to, needs to, uh, that we need to all build together to take us there. So, just something to think about, something as you're, as you're working through all these uh, sessions today. So I think that that's about it. I want to thank you all for being here. Stick around right now. We've got uh, seven keynotes today. We've got 13 executive track talks. And we've got about 40 hours of engineering workshops ahead of you. So thank you, and uh, have a great show. <laughs>